Well, the last set of slides are just really a, a very, very short brief run through what did we talk about today? So we st I started at the beginning. Uh, this is what we're going to tell you. And, and then uh, Brad, Christiane, David, my colleagues, we, we kind of give you the here's what we, you know, we told you all that great stuff. And now I'm going to say, here's what we said. And then we'll have a conversation. We'll hear feedback from you, questions. We would love your feedback. Um, so next step, obviously, I think, but clearly is start applying some of the best principles you see um, here into the practices in the projects that you are members of or that are you're overseeing. What we think what we what we think is based upon over 20 years of experience in, that we've seen in, in carrying this out. Our oldest project in Navair started using the original team software process back in the year 2000, 2001. So over 20 years ago, uh, that that very team is still to this day, uh, one of our long, longest customers and amongst many um, still benefiting from carrying out all these best practices. Principles, sure, they've tailored it to fit their needs, um, but they're a great example of a, a long lasting project supporting the fleet. And now they're moving on to new variants, new platforms, still doing great stuff and lots of other projects since then. Um, really, there is no right way to do this, this is a lot of, uh, um, you know, laying the foundation and the groundwork. Uh, the idea being is to have process, to have some planning and be sure you're doing quality and you achieve those uh, three fundamental tenets of, like I said before, my elevator speech is delivering uh, projects on cost, on schedule to highest level of quality you can give them. And uh, so hopefully that is what you have seen here today as a potential example of the great stuff that you can uh, get from, uh, you know, tailored versions of the great TSP that we all started from to where, how, where and how you can take that today across your organization. So uh, be a leader, be a member, regardless. Um, Everybody has helped leading us and making this happen. So um, it's all based upon some discipline, which means just knowing some steps. You and your your teammates, um, you all uh, have confidence in these. You've bought into these. You've helped create them and tailor them as you need. That's what's going to make you most successful. The focus on the quality is just uh, cannot be overstated. Um, but its foundation rests on having plans, having actual data, and looking at how things are going uh, for, for those major areas. What's the product being produced on time, on schedule, and what's the quality of it? So um, I, I, I think you will um, like the results you get. Um, and with that, we'd love to hear questions, comments. Just saying it one more time. Um, for information, I'm the point of contact for for Navair uh, on the process resource team, on the products and services we provide. Mostly, we are a big service organization, helping other projects do their job better, um, and then they rely on us for the training and the coaching to keep them going. So do we have any anything in the chat? I see a few things. Julia posted a question about asking about uh, part two of uh -huh. the second shoe. Uh, I can talk to that for a minute. Um, when we normally teach this class at uh, Nav Air, we, uh, we do this section we just talked about in the morning. We break for lunch, then we come back and we have a number of uh, workshops we found a way to do hands-on by having 
uh, files posted so that the participants can pull them down and pretty much a really simple installation so they can follow along with the demonstrations that happen in these workshops and using uh, the process dashboard tool that we use in NavAir to do the things that, we're, that I'm showing in the workshops. So it's as hands-on as you can get while still being remote. Uh, and so if there we have uh, three or four topics that we cover that are uh, common and needed, like how the, the, the principal Principal concepts are capabilities using process dashboard to do your job, logging time, signing off task, finding a task, logging a defect, those kind of things. We demonstrate it. And you have, by pulling the files down beforehand, the ability to walk through someone else's dashboard and poke and prod at it and take it for a test drive. Um, another, other workshops talk about how to use a uh, the planning piece of dashboard, which is the workflow, uh, the WBS editor, the, the work breakdown structure editor and the power of that it has that David Toom has built into the stool to make it to do what David uh, St. Amon was talking about, doing the exceptional design, and then taking and breaking down a top down and a bottom up, all that's done. Um, the details of, of making it happen are in the WBS editor and that's demonstrated. And again, you can do hands-on and play with it and do it yourself and see how it works. Uh, we have a couple more workshops, but those are the two major ones that uh, I won't I won't take all the the um, thunder away from having you come and see us in December. <laughs> but uh, that's that'll be another um, three hour, four hour uh, workshop. And what we'll do is post that material through the C and uh, make it available before the um, the C Tech Talk, and you'll be able to pull those down and set it up on your computer and follow along, follow the bouncing ball. Thank you, Brad. Um, well, I apologize. We got done early. Um, we're usually, uh, we meet or beat our schedules and our budgets. Uh, uh, us, the service team that helps all those other engineering teams across uh, Navier uh, do their work better, faster, cheaper. <laughs> I'll have Me. you know that I was logging the start and stops during this uh, presentation. So I we uh, we got it about 10 minutes ahead. And then uh, we really opened it up when uh, Christiane covered her pieces, which we knew there's a buffer of time in there where we could beat the schedule. So it's like a catch up opportunity. So worked out great. We have time for questions. Yeah, I know one of our defects we logged was uh, that the, uh, the mouse that Brad was using kept falling off the roller cage. And uh, so we're going to fix that guy. <laughs> I don't don't know. We, we did a dry run yesterday, and I don't think we saw this problem. Nope. I, so uh, we tried to look for something like this, and it just happened. Thank you, Jeff, for driving. Absolutely. Glad to help. Julia. Oh, I put another question in the chat. Ah. Okay, are you teaching virtually or in person? Do you see a difference between the two? Okay, so when we teach this class, we were doing it in person and it made the workshop more um, understandable because I could look over people's shoulders. But having, when COVID happened, everything went virtual. And so we found a way to make the downloading and setting up of the hands-on tools uh, of, of part two. Is this a question for part two or for part one? Both. Okay, so we do all we do them all virtual now, um, and by having chats and audio uh, phone lines or or um, computer audio, we can get the interaction we want. And the hand raising, we use Teams to do our classes, but very similar. Just the the, the pull down menu is a different place. Um, so for the first part, we have that interaction and. Um, we do the same breaks, the pull down timer, the countdown timer is invaluable for, for having that lined up. Uh, one of the other things that's really handy is that when we're doing the class, <clears throat> we put a splash screen up in the beginning that says the class starts in 10, nine, eight, and it counts down the beginning. So people know when the class is gonna start and not sit there online trying to figure out, is he gonna show up, is she gonna show up? So th we've got that figured out. As far as part two, doing it virtually, 
we've really super simplified the installation of the demonstration files they needed. So we have a zip we put out that they pull down and we give them simple instructions about unzip it. It makes a folder, put the folder here on your C drive and it'll work. Now on Macs and Linux, I don't know. I think we've, we've got somewhat luck on that. I don't know if I have the, I work with NMCI machines, which are all um, Windows, so we've got that nailed. But David Tuma has installations for dashboard, and I think, I don't know. I, I'd say I'd say Windows. We got the the work the workshops figured out for Windows, but for Macs and Linux, I'd have to um, have them look at it beforehand and try it out. Well, Brad, I can just attest that today my Mac worked better than your Windows machine. <laughs> <laughs> but the uh, files I post for following along on the workshop, yes, that's the question. Yeah. So, so I, we, I haven't focused on that. I don't have a Mac. Um, and my clientele is Windows. In preparation so I focus. for December, we will definitely no more. Yeah. Maybe we'll make a, a pull down for the Macs and use uh, Jeff and David St. Amon. They both have Macs and we can try it out. Oh, there you go. Okay. I, I, I did it when I took the training and it worked. So. Oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. Um, you have a thank you from Barty in the chat okay. as well. As far as seeing the difference between the two, um, I think that people are more vocal in person. You can see that they're going, what? Without mm -hmm. them saying anything and you can, you can answer their question or, or prompt them to ask their question. So I guess when people are getting more um, likely to raise their hand, quote unquote, or ask the question in the chat as we get more and more into people in virtual meetings. But there's been a definite reluctance to say anything on the virtual ones at first mm -hmm. and probably still not back to the same openness of having the face to face meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing yeah, new there. I think, I think we've seen that like uh, courses that we have taught by contractors for us. Have people take a couple of times to get warmed up enough with each other, even though they're virtual, to even raise their hand and speak up, talk. So we know that from our exceptional engineering experiences. They're getting really good at it now, but we're like three quarters of the way through it. So <laughs> that way on the first week or two. Yeah. So I realize this is a very out of the box um, for, a, for a tech talk, having it be four hours is a phenomenal commitment on everybody's part. So I really greatly appreciate everybody who got a chance to stick with through this and see all the material. Um, like Julia mentioned, it's being recorded and it's gonna be posted. So um, we'll get the best, in, the best of what we can out of this and have a couple of videos that will cover the sections between the breaks. So it could be more bite-sized than sitting down for four hours. <laughs> but it is a lot of material that we present and we do, we, this was a normally a three-day or three day class, and over time, we have got it reduced down to a half day. And, and we added the workshop because people got asked a lot of hands-on questions, and so we added that half day there. But we're looking, Jeff's talking about having them being separated and having us teach this half day and having us teach the workshops and maybe at different days, or maybe they'll always be paired up, but people will sign up for one and not the other. So we'll see yeah, how it for, goes. For, for, for members of engineering teams doing their day job work, their, their really important and urgent work, um, if you don't fill up an entire day for them, um, we, we've seen that really help a lot. And we've seen it, I, I think uh, all of us from the PRT can attest to why like doing planning sessions, we don't do a week of planning if we were to do a week of planning all day long, we'll break it into half days because people being able to get back to their day job work is vital. And if you can get them in the morning when they're more awake and more into it, let them sleep in the afternoon through the day <laughs> job. Oh, just kidding, but seriously. Yeah, it really helps to have shorter <clears throat> periods and uh, not so much fire hose. So there's something else going on that the C is gonna be interested in. Uh, we've been doing these, I wouldn't call them brown bags, but when a team has a question and uh, they want some training and it happens virtually like this, we've been recording them. And so we're starting to get some recordings of 
workshops, one timers that we capture, like how to fill the size of domain template for a process dashboard. And so we're starting to capture these things. We did another one on, um, on peer, personal reviews. We just glossed over it today and, and said, hey, you should do them. But I've had a request from one of my teams on remind us how. And so we captured those and it was two half days or two, yeah, uh, or two, um, two one hours or something like that. And so we've captured those and we have them posted in the wiki in Navair and maybe we can look at them and scrub them and add them to the library for the C. Wow. Okay. Are there any other questions? And am I sharing the right screen? <laughs> yes, you are. Wrap up. Wrap up. Okay. I really, I really want to sincerely thank um, Jeff Schwab and his team for, you know, this is a real gift to the C. I mean, this is really, really great training and to make it not only to do it as a tech talk and, and dedicate all of this time, but also to record it and making it an asset that anybody can get to is really a tremendous gift. So please everybody join me in a virtual round of applause for everybody because I, I really, really appreciate all the work that you guys have put into it. It, it shows it was really, really well done and very informative.